Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel. Today we have a new episode. We start with this preview and next is the unboxing. Feel free to pause the video where you need. Here we can see some of my sizes and the closer look of this label. I hope that in the future these boxes will come exactly the size of the sneakers that they are inside. I mean I don't want to see much larger box if it's not needed. Because if we want to be sustainable, well let's just be then, right? As we can tell this pair is uh, max cushioning sneakers and I wish more of them they will be on the market from every company if it's possible. This particular pair under 150 euros or 165 dollars for me is the new benchmark in cushioning from all the sneakers that I tried so far. This is a second pair of this model that I buy so far. The first one had to go back because they had some issues and I couldn't keep them. More about those issues at the end of the video. We can see here that they have a honeycomb pattern on this midsole and that is very impractical when you want to clean them. So I wish they would just get rid of that uh, pattern in the future. Basically, once you get some dirt in that pattern, it's impossible to get it out. So they won't look the same the next day, for example, or a few hours later. It's one thing to be made with paint and a completely different thing when it's made with maybe laser or what they use there to do it. In this shot we can see the sole and the biggest problem that I have with them is this sole actually. I had a, another um, pair of sneakers from this model in the past and I had to send them back unfortunately. More of that story in just a bit. They do have a trail version of this particular model. Those they have these uh, rubber pieces made by Vibram which is great but the model is exactly the same of these rubber pieces. So what do I mean by that? Well even though they are bigger and rugged and everything they still have this problem that they are uh, falling off from that midsole and it's not because of the glue. You'll see the midsole rip it off and this kind of info that I'm putting here you usually don't see it in big channels. I want to keep it real. So if any of you are wondering What's the solution for this? Well, it's easy. Just put one piece of rubber from the heel to the end of the shoe and you won't have these issues. Not six like here in this case. Anyway, let's move on. We can see here the insole. It has around five millimeters. It's soft enough. I like it. Nothing to complain with this one. In the shot we can see the heel is very soft but I wish it wasn't that thick like it is. The back of the heel is reinforced but it's not very rigid which I like it this way. We can see here the footbed it has a thin layer of foam over that uh, fresh foam material which I like it and it's not making it too rigid for me. So I like it this way. The tongue has some padding, has a bit too much in my opinion. They could have make it a lot thinner than this one. This one will give you a lot of heat in the summer. So that's another con right here. In this shot we can see the right foot. 
because I want to see if the quality is consistent. I have to admit that I didn't have issues with the stitching or the gluing. Everything was well done and I didn't find extra threads or you name it. The logo on the heel is not reflective. The logo on the lateral width N is not reflective. Only the one from the tongue, that one is reflective. And we can see here the knit on this uh, upper, it is a bit rubberized in a few places to give some structure. About of the rest of the upper, I wish it was a bit more airy because the material that is under, it feels very warm and not very breathable, unfortunately. So I wish that could change in the future with other version of these sneakers. So this midsole in few places is a bit more rigid, in others a bit more soft. But the way it's done, I like it overall. Except maybe this pattern, which I don't like it at all. I wish it was gone. Yeah, here this heel is much too thick that it should be. For the hot summers that we have these days, I don't think it's a good idea. When I'm seeing this sole, the only thing it came to my mind it was what a missed opportunity they had here. This is what it is, in my opinion. Once I got them for a second, I thought I could keep them. I could keep them and give them a second chance. But I know what it will happen in the future. That sole will rip off once again and I will have to send emails explaining what happened, send pictures and so on. And I don't want that kind of trouble once again. If I know that rubber sole, it won't last, well, I will just stay away from them and that's it. It's just common sense for me. We can see here the size of these laces and the kind of upper that they have. The laces, I don't like them too much. I don't feel a good quality in them. We can have here a closer look with this upper. And we can see a bit better this tongue. As you can see, it's very perforated, but it's also very thick. It has plenty of uh, foam inside and that one will keep the heat there like crazy. I don't like it at all. It's too much. At least, where is the top of the tongue? Well, it's almost as thick as my finger, if not the same. So that's way too much. Here we have a closer shot with this footbed. Like I said, I like it. In this shot, we can see the thickness of this upper. It doesn't look too much, but the material that is inside is that one, which is the problem. Here with this arrow, I indicate the kind of material that it goes till the end of the shoe, the front end. That is the material that it doesn't allow the air to flow like it should inside. In this shot, we can see how long and wide they are these insoles and soles of these sneakers. You can always open a second tab with different pair of sneakers and compare them if you need. And here we have the weight test. In my opinion, it doesn't even matter how much they have. If they have less than 700 grams, I am okay with that, you know. I wish they were having a bit more and having that uh, sole completely done. You know, full rubber sole, not this 
incomplete sole. This kind of compromise in between weight and durability, I don't want it, you know. Here we can see the feet that I have, the kind of arch and instep that I have. For the size of my feet, I discovered these sneakers having the best fit possible, in my opinion. I don't know if it's perfect or not, but it's very close to that. So the length is close to perfect and the width, I would say, is half a centimeter, maybe one centimeter less than my feet, but it's still um, wide enough the shoe inside. So it doesn't affect that the insoles aren't as wide as they should. Like you see in this angle, they do have plenty of space, those fingers in front of the sneaker. So it's good enough this way. I like it this way. This shot here is in real time because I want you to see how easy it is to take them inside my feet. So I will say the opening is big enough, I don't have any issues. Having them on my feet, like I said, it has a perfect match for me. I would say it's really true to size these ones. I like it the way they feel my feet inside and the cushioning is, for me, is the benchmark. A bit better than this one is, well, quite a bit better is the one from RC Elite, but those are much expensive. With these ones on my feet, I feel that cushioning in front of the shoe and on the back of the shoe. Usually I feel it on the heel and that's it. In front, almost nothing. And here is not the case. Here is proper thickness. So I like the way it feels with this midsole and the stack that it has. Very correct stack in my opinion. More I moving around with them, more I feel that how good is this cushioning and how well they fit to my feet in this case. And finally, we have some unfit shots from a lower angle. Here we can see the kind of profile that they have, the kind of cushioning that I get from this midsole and where are my toes inside of that toe box. The time for pros and cons. For pros, I would say the price because it's okay. It's not too expensive in my opinion. They have some colorways, but not too many. Like I said, I like the size of this midsole. I think it's the best thing on these sneakers. I love it actually. The stack is right on point and I like the way they fit. At least to me, this size fits right on point. I'm trying to thinking if I still have any other uh, pros for them, but I don't think I have. Maybe just one thing and that might be the stability. It's very good on them because they are wide enough and that wide sole, it makes a difference. So I like it very much, that stability that they have. Now cons. Well, while the comfort and the cushioning is amazing, because it is, I have to be honest and say the truth, it is, I feel bad because of that sole. And I will explain better why this time. Um, the last pair that I tried, the first one, I decided to keep them and took them out for two hours, two, three hours, more or less. Well, when I came back and watched the sole, I noticed that one piece of rubber was already starting to peel off from that sole. And that's not okay, man. It's, it's impossible after a few hours start to lose those chunk of uh, rubber from the sole. It's not okay, you know? You don't pay 150 euros or 165 dollars and few hours later you lose them you know that is how i felt when i saw that sole and if you are wondering how did i use them well simply as a lifestyle sneaker i see the mall you know i didn't even run with them i just used them to walk can you imagine two hours later to be this way maybe climb a few stairs and that's it that's the only effort that i made with them 
At first I thought maybe it's the glue, but I was observing them and noticed that the part where they are opening is not the glue, it's under the glue. It was the midsole actually that is opening, you know? So I had to get myself in contact with New Balance, explain what's happening, uh, send multiple uh, pictures about these shoes. And in the end, they did uh, ask me to send them back to a specific address with a specific kind of label, especially for the, the laboratory that they have to understand a bit better what happened with them and in what kind of conditions they did have these issues, you know. This is the experience that I had with them. So because of that one, I can't give them these ones a second chance. I simply can't. I, I'm afraid I will have the same problem and I don't want to have the hassle once again for them. It just, it doesn't work for me the the time that I lose in explaining what happened, waiting for the money back and search for another pair of sneakers. That's a big problem for them. In my opinion, like I said before, is a missed opportunity for New Balance. I mean, you made almost a great product and you didn't put the souls that they should have. You put this, uh, I don't know how to name them, without being a jerk, you know. But these aren't souls. Six pieces of rubber on that sole, you cannot call it sole. At least I, I can't, I'm sorry. I wouldn't even care, they are not breathable enough. I wouldn't care about the padding and many other things. If that sole would have been well made, made to last, you know. But I get it, they cannot be more better than than um, fresh from 1080 version 12 because those are just 20 euros or so more expensive so you cannot sell these ones at a lower price and a better shoe but that means you lose sales because of this problem you know you can burn one people once but you cannot burn it twice you know once you they will see how they are they won't buy it anymore they want even though if they are trail version i wanted to pull the trigger many times and because of seeing that soul i know is a dead end you know my final thoughts on them they won't last i cannot be that fool i will end here this video thank you very much for watching if you have any questions please let me know i'm happy to reply leave a like if you like this video subscribe if you like this channel and see you next time have a nice day take care of you